Hello, everybody. Chris Hamilton here with EntermyInvoice.com, and I've got Peter Tunison from Leverage Consulting Group. Sorry that we're starting a little bit late. A uh, bit of a comedy of errors. We are uh, got locked out of the office where our computer was, so we're uh, we're starting this a couple of minutes late. But I appreciate you hanging on. We'll be checking periodically into the chat uh, area as well. And for anyone that's watching the replay, thanks a lot for joining. I uh, greatly appreciate that. So what we're going to do is um, Peter and I had a discussion with um, Jeff Borshua recently, who's the Intuit um, and um, uh, Sarum, who are Intuit reps, uh, about what we could do to help uh, promote not only what we do, but also how it can work within QuickBooks Online. And we came up with this idea about the 48-hour uh, Canadian revenue audit. It's a process that Peter is going to share with you today in regards to how he manages to expedite that whole process. So he's going to kind of open the kimono and show you some of the, um, some of the things that he's doing uh, to become way more profitable, not only way more profitable, but get these done faster and have a better experience for people that are going through a, uh, an absolute stressful time in their life. So as we get started, if you're in, you can actually ask comments um, down below, and we will take a look and see those comments. Um, and uh, with that said, I'm just going to jump into this. I'm going to give a real quick overview here just to give you the magnitude and understanding. And I've, anyone that may have seen me speak before in regards to um, CRA audits, you may have seen these slides. And, and if you haven't, I'll give you kind of the importance behind this. So in the 2016 federal budget, um, what happened was... Um, the uh, the government allotted uh, $444 million over five years to increase the amount of audits for tax avoidance and evasion. And uh, with that said, um, you know, that's an awful lot of, uh, oh, pardon my stuff, I got a couple of things happening on my computer here. Um, with that said, um, you know, that's an awful lot of money that's being allotted to going after the tax avoidance side of things. The CRA also predicted that it will bring in an additional $2.6 billion over the next five years uh, for anyone that is avoiding uh, taxes or doing tax evasion. And then the other thing you need to look at is the penalties are up tenfold uh, between 2012 and 2015 from like literally about $60 million to almost half a billion dollars. That will be going up from there. The point of this slide is... You have to understand that the Canadian government's very serious about getting their money back into their coffers. Uh, must be because they're spending way too much money as it is right now. They've uh, come up with this tax shortfall or the uh, spending shortfall. Fall. Um, but this presents a golden opportunity for accountants and bookkeepers to be able to um, go after a marketplace that uh, you know I feel is underserved or uh, people tend to avoid because of the sheer volume that um, of work that's associated with it. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Peter Tunison from Leverage Consulting Group to talk a little bit about his process. And if you have any questions, periodically we'll be checking in to find out about uh, any kind of questions that you may have as well. So feel free to put them in the comment area and we'll get to them. I'm just going to check right now, make sure that no one's got anything there. Nope, we're all good. So Peter, away with... Uh, with your comments okay. here. Well, so. I, I appreciate the uh, introduction, Chris. Um, I, I don't think I could have done the introduction any better when it comes to the issues, when it, uh, when it comes to GST audits in particular. I mean, that's where we're going to focus the discussion on. Um, I think naturally the avoidance is, is going to target all aspects of, um, of tax non-filing or, or a purposeful uh, avoiding of filing. And so, but we're going to focus on the GST side of things because those are some quite common ones that uh, that a lot of people want to stay away from, just from a compliance standpoint and, and a risk standpoint, um, and just the time commitments that, that go along with it. Um, however, the process that I'm going to run you guys through today um, has made it really accessible uh, to both professionals as well as the clients to turn around the CRA audits quickly um, and reduce the stress over time. So I'll, I'll just start talking a little bit about the challenges and then uh, give you some what-if scenarios as, as well as the uh, actual scenario that I'm going to, that I've worked through uh, here recently. Um, so one of the challenges that uh, we often see with or that we're going to see with every GST audit is uh, a 30-day turnaround requirement. Um, when you put that in perspective of what usually gets 
gets delivered to you, uh, clients often don't even have their books in order. So to get anywhere from your, with your conventional bookkeeping, you're looking at three to six weeks before a bookkeeper can generally even get to the stuff, let alone process it. Um, and in turn, uh, what I've noticed in the past as well is that the focus uh, – for these CI audits becomes the bookkeeping and record keeping, um, but fails to uh, allow a, a enough time towards the end of the process to really evaluate what we actually uh, have in front of us um, for it. So we're going to go over that, how we can free up more time to change the focus from bookkeeping and record keeping to actually working on the audit and minimizing the impact as much as possible. Okay, so what if I told you um, that we could get the bookkeeping done for the majority of CRA audits in 48 hours, uh, and, and lots of them potentially even less, and I'll share in this example here, coming up pretty quickly, how we've actually managed to do that, and I've uh, since I've already touched on a little bit of the focus so on shifting it to the audit rather than the bookkeeping, I won't uh, belabor that point, um, but really with the process that we're going to show you, um, you know, what if what if we showed you that you could get better audit results uh, because you can turn around the bookkeeping faster and you could focus on the actual audit itself and, and the communication with the auditor and the negotiation aspects of it. Um, turning it around quicker will definitely lower client stress levels because clients don't like to deal with calendar revenue as it is. So the sooner we can get it out of their hair, uh, the better off they are. And, and naturally, when you're dealing with deadlines for the client, uh, a lot of that stress will carry over to us as professionals as well. So we this system is really going to help alleviate a lot of the uh, the issues when dealing with the Canada Revenue Audit. Um, so as I already said, what if I was able to uh, tell you that we could free up a substantial amount of time with the process that we use? Um, now one misconception with freeing up time has, has tended to say, well that means less hours for me, that means I can bill my client less. Well, in reality, uh, now it's time to get your head wrapped around the uh, value-based billing that comes along with it, um, and I'll show you uh, what, what that would look like as well. So a client that recently came to me, and we'll just call him John Smith for the sake of this uh, example here, um, had two companies uh, that he hadn't filed taxes on for the last three years, corporate tax and GST. Um, the beauty of this client was he was a true shoebox client. Um, I had to ask him to get me all his bank statements because naturally he didn't have those. So he came into my office with 56 bank statements and 36 credit card statements, just a phenomenal amount of data. Um, and the best thing yet is because Counter Revenue already didn't really like him personally um, and uh, was seizing any assets he personally had in his name, he ran everything through his business. So he was running his business and his personal transactions through the business, just leading to a sheer magnitude of 2,300 transactions that we had to process. Um, so, so a really uh, a massive uh, amount of work that we had to do, and uh, not to mention the bank reconciliations that uh, came along with that process. Um, so, yeah. So, <clears throat> based on some simple math, if we had if we had done the math with, through conventional bookkeeping processes, we would have processed anywhere between. 20 to 25 transactions per hour, um, and depending on how clean uh, the data is that was entered, you'd be able to do two to five bank reconciliations per hour if you're diligent in how you're getting the data entered. Um, that doesn't include, you know, the, the washroom breaks that the bookkeepers like to keep or the interruptions that you get from uh, the phone calls uh, from other clients and whatnot, because likely you'll have more than one or two of these uh, on the go at the same time. Um, but if you took some simple math and best case scenario, 2,300 transactions should have taken us 92 hours to complete in, in normal bookkeeping, um, as well as 18 hours in bank reconciliation time. So a total of 110 hours. Um, so quite lucrative for a bookkeeper that uh, says, ah, that's a great, a great hour split to, uh, to get your job done, but it's not the best case scenario for the client. And, and when you're already three to six weeks out before you start, now you've got to add 110 hours, even if they were to be able to work on your file, that's another three weeks. So you're well past the 30 day deadline, uh, that, that Canada revenue has already put on you. So our results. Here's what we've managed to do with our system, uh, and better yet, I should say, with with the help of Chris's system, uh, with Enter My Invoice. Um, so we've managed to enter 2,300 transactions in 46 hours, and we've reconciled the 92 bank reconciliations in eight hours. So more than or less than half the time than what it would have take, taken taken. Uh, 
conventional bookkeeping. Now, we did start this pitch with a 48-hour CRA audit, so it's not quite 48 hours. However, you, you, I'm sure you catch my drift when, when we're getting bookkeeping done in 46 hours rather than the 92 that we, uh, we initially would have started with. Peter, I'm just going to check to see if anyone's asked any questions. It uh, doesn't look like it at this point in time, but uh, if anyone has questions, even after the fact on the replay, you can just add them in the comments section and we'll, uh, we'll go back and take a look at them uh, periodically to, to answer them as well. So um, now, how did, you, how did you do this? Well, the beauty in, in all of this was we used uh, two main tools and, and we've got them highlighted here. We've used bookkeeping automation and QuickBooks Online. Um, so a high-level overview of the process is, is that we scan all the bank statements. We, we get them in through uh, our high DPI uh, scanner and a, a high-quality file, essentially, to, to get the most accurate reading on it. Then we process, process them through some artificial intelligence that Bookkeeping Automation and Enter My Invoice provide. And then we're able to mass code these transactions. Um, because people are creatures of habit, uh, every time we go to a Shell gas station, we know that we can code them all as fuel. So why are we still entering them in as individual transactions when it's the same thing every, every single time? Um, once we've run it through the uh, mass coding process, now we, um, we, we uh, have a couple of options. Uh, generally what we do is we sync it to QuickBooks Online or we import it into QuickBooks Online um, and that, that's where we do the bank reconciliations and the further reporting that we need to do. Um, but Bookkeeping Automation does provide quite the versatility as well into um, some other platforms uh, and the real help has been putting it just straight into Excel and running some pivots on it as well um, and then processing it from there how you see fit. So it, it works works really well. So once we've, uh, yeah, so once we've uh, got it into QuickBooks. Now we can have multiple users working on the bank reconciliations, on different uh, credit card statements, um, and even this. So you know, while we're getting the books updated, if we're dealing with a professional that's got the audit going on, they have live access to that data as well as we're updating it, so they can see what's going on on the minute, um, and it's and it's ready for them so that they can start reviewing this work early on if they please to do so. Um, and then the, the real uh, benefit that we found as well is if we have to go back and look for uh, support on where the transaction comes from, QuickBooks Online will actually store an image uh, link within the uh, transact at the transaction level that you can now open up and you'll have the bank statements right in front of you as well. So, so I'm going to jump in here and talk about how um, how we did it using our system, and then we'll get back into uh, Peter telling me a little bit about it. So our platform is uh, now entermyinvoice.com. Uh, uh, used to be called Bookkeeping Automation, but we've made the name change recently. But when Peter was using it, it was Bookkeeping Automation just to kind of get over any confusion there. What Peter's talking about is this dreaded shoebox client who comes in with the bank and credit card pay, uh, statements that are in paper format, or if they are a little more progressive, they might actually have a PDF of them. Um, so what we do is we, uh, not us per se, but the client would scan that information and put it into a PDF at a minimum of 300 uh, DPI, and that's just a setting, just so that we can read this. Once you get that, then what happens is we can import it into our system with a file upload. Um, you can email it into our system, or you can also use Dropbox or Box to do a direct upload into our platform. So where Peter gains efficiencies here is the first thing that we do is our system will go through and optical character recognize the data and extract it. So that gets rid of all that manual typing. The second thing that it does is we allow you to sort on different vendors. So for example, uh, Peter was talking about Shell, is the way people would normally do this, they would go through line by line and they would um, put the information into say QuickBooks Desktop uh, or QuickBooks Online at a line by line level. What our system allows you to do is sort by that and as he said, bulk code all that to an automotive or fuel expense in your company. So if you could you could do 500 transactions in the time it takes you to do one. So that's where you see that kind of efficiencies. The other thing too is that on a go forward basis, um, if you're gonna be doing regular bookkeeping for this client, which hopefully they won't get themselves in this mess again, and they will be doing regular bookkeeping, if something is the same all the time, so for example, this um, uh, shell example, um, you can apply a rule that it will remember that and just code it that same way every time it sees it coming into the system. So that's where Peter was able to gain about a 50% efficiency 
on doing the um, uh, doing the work here. And then from here, he could have put it into QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, export it to an Excel spreadsheet, manipulate the data, and batch upload it to other accounting systems as well. So that's really the heavy lifting on our part and how we did that. So I'm going to flip it back over to Peter to tell you a little bit more. Okay, so then I just want to provide a quick summary, just to kind of rehashing it because we, we threw a lot of slides at you all of a sudden. Um, so again, we had 2,300 transactions that would have, and 92 bank reconciliations that through normal bookkeeping processes would have taken us 110 hours. Um, in our process, we, uh, we've done the same, except we've done it in 54 hours. Um, one thing that didn't change in all of this is a 30-day CRA deadline. So now the 54 hours, even if, if best case scenario, if your bookkeeper or ourselves were to work on your file, we could turn this around within a two-week time span so that you would still have two weeks to deal with Canada revenue um, rather than being behind the eight ball waiting for timelines to, uh, to, to fit the 110 hours and getting it all processed. So really, at the end of the day, what we have found is that, <clears throat> sorry, is using uh, Enter My Invoice is it frees up uh, more time to review the coding and the categories uh, in more detail. So it's allowed us to catch more GST um, classifications, codings, um, when we're dealing with meals or sometimes some personal items. It's, it's been much quicker, or sorry, much uh, easier for us to go through this stuff because now we have the added time and we're not doing this at the 11th hour to try and, and get an answer to Canada Revenue. Um, on top of that, now that you're turning this stuff around quicker, again, as I said early on, the client feel-good aspect is huge in this. You're turning this stuff around rather quickly rather than having it drag, drag on for a long time. Um, and it, it now provides uh, the firm an option to value bill. Uh, so not just to charge the, the 54 hours, but our strategy has been to charge out at the 110 hours and we then show the client, okay, we're actually going to give you a small discount on this because uh, we've got some tools in-house where we can, we can actually make this happen. Um, so our rates reflect not the hours necessarily, but the value that we've delivered at the end of the day. And now bookkeeping, even for myself as a startup consulting business a year and a half ago, um, where bookkeeping wasn't the, the most lucrative thing to get into as a CPA, um, I, I can now now double my build my internal profit from bookkeeping that I previously wouldn't have been able to so it's, it's been a huge help uh, in, in that aspect so yeah. well that comes to the end of the presentation I'm gonna have a couple of questions for Peter here but first of all just you know I'm really uh, happy that uh, Peter took the time out today uh, especially during tax season to uh, to talk to us about this um, and uh, if you want to reach out to Peter, here's his contact information. You can reach him at 587-438-5917 or peter at leverage.works. If you want to talk to me, uh, feel free to reach out to me, 403-630-1243, chris.hamilton at entermyinvoice.com. Now, Peter, if someone has a client that's under a CRA audit, and let's say it's the first time they would look at a process like this, it's going to take a lot of hand holding and learning and stuff like that. Would you be able to help people through this process? And of course, that would be for a fee, but would you be able to be there to support and help? We are, and we can generally hit the ground running within one or two business days on something like this. Um, I've actually gotten some uh, scenarios where uh, somebody's come to me on a, on a Wednesday night, and by uh, Saturday morning, I had all their stuff put into Excel already, uh, because that's how quickly the system can run through this stuff. Um, so yeah, we would we would gladly help out other individuals to um, to make this work as easy as possible, and whether that involves. Uh, uh, us helping you out and pushing it through or train you on it and, and, and get you comfortable with the system. So I'm just going to check, see if there's any questions. There are not any questions. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is just recent, I'm sure one of the guys that's watching or one of the people that's watching right now, it's, it's his example, but I'm not going to name names, was um, same sort of thing. And this, you know, when I say this, I say it in all honesty and don't think that I'm trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Is, uh, we had an accountant here in Calgary who was in a bit of a time crunch to get some um, year-end uh, bookkeeping done and could not get a bookkeeper to do, get it done in time. So what happened was he had uh, 1,600 transactions that he had to do. Uh, the equivalent, if you look at the time frame on that, would have been 24, 25 hours. Uh, I think it's actually higher than that, but we're going 24, 25 hours. Um, he was able to pull this together in uh, just a little over three hours. Um, so this is, it's a fundamental change for companies to look at this 
and understand that you can get more done in less time and bill out um, that you know value pricing that, that Peter's talking about. And in essence, this accountant's hours or hourly rate for bookkeeping, even though they charge out at $50 an hour, uh, shot up to over $700 an hour uh, based on the equivalent. Now, this guy also gave a bit of a discount to his client as well. So, but still, you know, at $300 to $350 an hour for doing bookkeeping, um, it becomes quite the lucrative portion of your business. So that's one of the things that, uh, um, that we're looking at here. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in. Peter, do you have any other information you want to convey or anything you want to say? No, I, I think uh, some of these things are very case specific, so it's best to either reach out to either myself or Chris and see where we can potentially help you guys out with. Um, one thing that I, I guess maybe I will add is these efficiencies, uh, the larger the file, the bigger the efficiencies are, but the, the bare minimum efficiency that I've seen is is 35% faster um, on a very small file than what it would have usually been. So we've got some really good returns early on, and they just go go up exponentially as we go into that 500, 1,000 transactions. Um, when you go over that 2,000 transactions, it's, it's just phenomenal the amount of efficiency we can create with that. So. Excellent. Well, with that said, I don't see any comments coming in. Um, what we will do is uh, end the broadcast. If anyone has any questions, they can leave it in the comments. I'll uh, check periodically over the next week here and see if there's any questions that have come in. Uh, and thanks to the people that showed up live. Anyone who's watched it after the fact, I uh, greatly appreciate that as well. Thank you very much, and have yourself a great day. And thanks to Peter Tunison for, uh, for sharing that valuable information with everyone as well. Thanks. Everyone have a good day.